Today, we're gonna be upgrading your mic and we're gonna be doing it without spending a single dime. So you probably already bought a USB mic. So maybe you have a Blue Yeti or you have a Blue Snowball or maybe you're still using one of those customer service mics. So it's okay. We all gotta start somewhere. Or maybe you're using one of those cheap Chinese generic mics that everyone seems to be using, like one of these, which I bought for $20, baby. Uh, this is Australian money, so it's all colorful and stuff. $900 reduce. Now, this is an XLR mic, so it does require you to use like an audio interface. If you don't know what an audio interface is or what an XLR mic is, we're going to be covering that in a future video. That's an entirely separate topic. But if you want links to everything you need to buy to get a mic like this working with your setup, uh, I'll leave a link to my Amazon affiliate links down below. But uh, today, let's do something fun. We're going to take this $20 mic and turn it from something that sounds like this. Wow, this microphone sounds extremely average. And turn it into something that sounds like this. Wow, this microphone sounds a little bit better than average. Now, before we get started, let me make this perfectly clear. I am no expert in audio. I've just been streaming for a really long time. I've used a lot of mics. I've done a lot of research. So if you're one of those audio snobs, that's okay. Just, uh, just get out. We don't need your kind in here. For anyone that's new here, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We do all sorts of videos from setting up your Twitch stream to make making your stream look fantastic, to growing your Twitch channel, to... Well, that's pretty much all we do here. Anyway, let's get started. But before we do that, let's switch out this fancy expensive mic for uh, this $20 mic. All right, how does this sound? Now, the mic also does come with one of these things, so uh, I guess we can slap this on too. Honestly, for like $20, this really doesn't sound that bad, especially when you consider that I spent $250 for this bad boy over here. But uh, I think we can do better than that. Now we're gonna be using software to fix this mic, but before we do that, I want you to do a couple things. Number one, make sure you get your mic off your table and as close to your mouth as possible, around four to six inches. This part is super important because you want your voice to be much louder than sounds like your PC fans or your mouse clicks or your keyboard clicks. We'll be covering a little bit of background noise this video, but I'll be doing an entirely dedicated video about that later on in the future, but stay tuned for that later. Now, if you don't have a way of getting your mic off your desk, you can buy like a cheap microphone arm off Amazon. Actually, yeah, I, I got one right here. I'll just show you it. Here we go. Yeah, you can get one of these things. It's like a pretty big arm. I got it for about $20 Australian. So I guess we're not spending like $0, but you should be able to get one of these. This is an orange note. But yeah, I'll leave a link for where you can get that arm off Amazon, but really any arm will do. And then the second thing that's pretty important is make sure you have the gain on your microphone set correctly. You wanna be speaking so that the meters in OBS are moving up to about minus six decibels. Cool. Now that we've got that sorted, let's talk about what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be using something called VST plugins and a VST plugin is basically just an add-on that you can use to process your microphone or add effects to your voice. OBS has built-in support for VST plugins and there are thousands out there. Some are free, some are paid. We're going to be using a popular free one called Reaper plugins. One, because, well, they're free and two, because they include all of the plugins that we're gonna be needing. I'm gonna leave a link to Reaper plugins down below. Just go ahead, install it, install the 64-bit version. Just make sure that when you're installing it, install it to the default location because OBS is looking for a specific location for your VST plugins. So if you change it, then OBS won't be able to find them. Now, once you've done that, you can open up OBS, click the cog next to your microphone, and then go to filters and add a filter. And you wanna add a new VST filter. Jesus Christ, it's so hot in here. Click on the drop down box. You should see a list of plugins there if you've installed Reaper correctly. If you haven't installed it correctly, check your program files VST plugins folder. If you don't see anything in there, you haven't installed Reaper properly. Okay, so there's like 10 different things here and I have no idea what any of this garbage means. All right, calm down. We're gonna break it down right now. We're gonna be adding a very specific chain of filters and the order matters. First, we're gonna add in some noise reduction. So that's just gonna get rid of like fan noise from your PC. And then we're gonna add a noise gate, which is just gonna shut your mic off when you're not talking. Then we're gonna add some EQ. So that's gonna allow us to like 
raise the bass in her voice and raise the treble to give you that nice warm radio like sound i hate when people say radio like sound because like i don't know what that means but you know you know what i'm talking about and then we're going to finish it off with some compression and we'll get into more about what compression is later now while we're adding all these filters pay attention listen with your ears with your headphones because right now you're listening to this mic with absolutely no filters whatsoever so as we go through each filter you'll hear exactly what difference each filter makes. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, if you want to know how your microphone sounds as you're making these changes, just go into the advanced audio properties for your mic and then turn monitoring on. So every time you add a filter, you can see how it sounds in real time. So the first effect we're gonna add to our chain is some noise suppression or noise reduction. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna record a sound profile so that Reaper knows exactly what background noise sounds like. Then what Reaper will do is it will take that sound profile and subtract it from our microphone's audio. So if you got like really loud PC fans, this is definitely what you want to use. Just make sure that you've done your best to get rid of the noise where possible because that's going to give you the best results. I feel like I didn't emphasize this point enough, so let me be very clear. Only use noise suppression if you cannot get rid of the background noise any other way. It does degrade the quality of your audio, so don't say I didn't warn you. So to do this, just add a re-fear standalone plug. I don't know why it's called re-fear. I don't know what that means, but add a re-fear standalone plugin. And then next to that, you'll see a checkbox that says automatically build noise profile. So what you need to do is be as silent as possible then click that checkbox. When that checkbox is active, it's gonna be listening to the background noise and that's what that red line will be. So run it for about five or six seconds and then uncheck it. Just be aware that these frequencies are gonna be removed from your audio. So the more background noise you have, then the worse results you're gonna get out of this. Cool. All right, let's enable that filter so you can see what the difference is. This is the sound of my voice without any noise suppression. I'm gonna stay silent so you can hear the background noise. And this is the sound of my voice with noise suppression. Again, I'll stay silent so you can hear the background noise. The next thing we're gonna add to our chain is a noise gate. And this one is also pretty simple. We're just gonna set a threshold and every time our mic goes above that threshold, then our mic will be on. And then when we stop talking and the levels go below that threshold, then our mic shuts off entirely. Again, this is gonna be pretty useful if you've got like a lot of background noise, like fan noise, mouse clicks, traffic noise, or like your neighbors are like shouting all the time. Yeah, Barbara, I hate the new bus schedule too. You're not the only one. So just go ahead, add a regate standalone plugin. And on the left side, you're gonna see a meter move up and down as you talk. So what you wanna do is stop talking and see where that meter goes up to. Then set your threshold to be just a little bit above that. I've set mine to about 40 decibels. So what that means is when I start talking and it goes above minus 40 decibels, my mic will be on. Then when I stop talking and it falls below 40 decibels or minus 40 decibels, then my mic shuts off. You can also change your attack time and your release time. So your attack time will be how quickly your noise gate activates when you start talking. So you want it to be pretty quick. And then your release time will be how long the gate stays open after you've stopped talking. Now you don't want your release time to be too quick because what you'll notice is you'll get audio that sounds like this. The microphone just like shuts off like immediately after every word that I say and it just sounds really jarring. So for me, I set my release time to about 200 milliseconds. That seems to be a good value for me. There are also other settings that you can change, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this video gets super long. There's things like hysteresis. So if you like wanna open your gate here, but then close it here, you can use that. But for most people, you probably don't need to worry about changing that. Cool, let's enable a noise gate and move on to the next filter. This is the sound of my voice before adding a noise gate. Now you're not gonna hear that much background noise because I do have noise suppression turned on but watch what happens when I turn on a noise gate. And this is the sound of my voice with a noise gate. So notice that as soon as I stop talking, the mic shuts off completely. All right, time for some EQ. This is where the fun part starts. I know we've waited until like nine minutes into the video, but yeah, I ramble a lot. So if you don't know what EQ does, basically what it does is it allows you to raise certain frequencies in your voice. 
to make it sound more flattering. So you can add a little bit of bass or cut out some of the mids or raise the treble a little bit. So the range of human hearing ranges from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So we're gonna choose some frequencies between that range and raise them up or lower them and just try to get something that sounds nice. So one thing you'll notice with this mic is it sounds like really thin, like compared to the other mic I was using, it just sounds like it lacks a lot of bass. The mids also sound kind of muddy as well, so we're gonna have to cut that back too. So our goal is we're gonna raise some of that bass and then cut out some of the mids and we're gonna add a sprinkle of uh, treble in there to make our voice sound crisp. So go ahead, add a re-EQ standalone plugin and then you should see a graph with six tabs. Now, if you've never seen this before, it might look a little bit intimidating, so so let's go through what we're going to be doing. So basically each tab represents a frequency or a band. And if you've ever seen one of those gigantic mixing boards with all the knobs, that's basically what each knob does. So what frequencies are we going to change? There's like all different standards that go all the way up to like 31 bands. We don't need that many bands. We're just going to stick to a simple 10 band EQ. If you ever heard of like a Go XLR that has 10 band EQ. So we're just going to go with that. Here are all the frequencies that we're going to be adjusting. So what you want to do is add a band for each of these frequencies. So you want to have 10 tabs and for each tab, you want to set the frequency to these values here. And then what you want to do is go through each of the 10 tabs and adjust the gain for each frequency. So I'm going to leave the gain settings I have set up for my microphone, but you'll need to adjust it for your voice and for your microphone. But these settings should work as a good starting point. So you can just put these in and then adjust it as necessary. So let's go through what I did for my setting. So for the first band, I basically just cut everything below 32 Hertz by selecting high pass as the type. You generally want to cut around like 80 to 100 Hertz to get rid of like that low frequency rumble in your desk or if your mic just naturally sounds like too boomy. Now if your mic sounds like really thin like this mic and you want to add like some bass to it you want to boost the frequencies up to about like 250 to 300 hertz and in my case I actually like really needed to add a ton. Now if your voice sounds like muddy and like nasally you want to cut around like 500 to a thousand hertz just to get rid of the mids. So in my case, I just dropped the mids like a couple dB, nothing too crazy. And then finally I added just a little bit of a boost to like the 3000 to 4000 Hertz range. That just gives your voice a little bit of treble and makes it sound like really, really crisp. But beyond the 4000 Hertz range is where your voice can get like kind of sibilant. So that's gonna be like where your S sounds and your T sounds start to sound a little bit harsh and kind of piercing. So I'm gonna enable my EQ settings so you can see just how much of a difference it's made. Here's an example of my voice sounds like with no EQ. And this is what my voice sounds like when I enable the EQ settings. If you want a little bit more info about what each frequency does, I've left some notes in the description box down below from the homie coffee or at media. If you guys really need help with your audio, he's super helpful. Go to his Twitch stream, ask him questions because he's like a gigantic nerd for audio. All right, last thing, Ugh, I need to use the bathroom though. I drank too much coffee. So the last thing we want to add is some compression. So compression can be a little bit confusing. So let me just give you a really basic explanation of what compression does. So if you're a streamer that tends to scream a lot, you're going to have parts of your audio that sound really loud and then parts that sound really quiet. So what compression does is it squashes down your audio so that the loudest parts become quieter and that way you get more consistent audio levels. But because you've effectively made your mic quieter, you need to add what's called the makeup gain to make up for the lost volume from the compression. So the way a compressor works is you set a threshold and then you set a ratio. And so what the ratio does is for every X dB you go above your threshold, your compressor will squash that audio down into one dB. For example, if I have a ratio of two to one, every time my volume goes above a set threshold, the volume of my voice above that threshold will only be half as loud as it would be without the compressor. You want like a super in-depth explanation of what compression is go watch booth junkies he does voiceover work for a living and his videos are his videos are amazing so go ahead add a recomp standalone plugin you're going to want to set a threshold now your threshold is going to depend on how loud your mic is to begin with but setting it around minus 24 db is a pretty good start the next thing you're going to want to change is your ratio so setting a ratio between two to one to three to one is a pretty good start i'm going to set mine to 2.5 to one because i find that to be pretty good for my voice but play around it with yourself. Just see what sounds good to you. If you want more of that broadcast radio sound, you're gonna wanna use more compression, but if you want a less aggressive sound, you wanna use less compression. Something like 1.5 to one. You can also set your attack and your release times. They work pretty similar to how a noise gate works. I like to set my attack time to be pretty fast, so two milliseconds, so it 
activates pretty much when I start talking. And my release time I set it to around 30 milliseconds. There are also things you can change like knee size and wet gain, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video because it's a bit too advanced for this video. So I'm gonna enable the compression and see what that sounds like. So this is what my voice sounds like with noise suppression, a noise gate, and some EQ on, but with no compression at all. And this is the difference that adding compression can make. So that's it. This is the final product of all four of our filters. But let's roll back a bit. I'm gonna turn off all these filters so you can get an idea of the difference all these filters have made. All right, how does that sound? Pretty different, right? You can see how much thinner the mic sounds and just sounds flat and dead. So I'm gonna go turn the filters back on and do the rest of the video. So the one thing I'm gonna point out because I know a lot of people are gonna be asking this question, this only works inside of OBS. If you wanna get your mic to sound good in like your games on Discord, you're gonna need to do something else, but I'm gonna cover that in another video. But if you wanna go and figure out yourself before I make the video, go research something called Equalizer APO. That will allow you to use all these filters outside of OBS. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you wanna talk about microphones or anything to do with streaming, jump on over in my Twitch stream. I stream four nights a week and a ton of you guys have actually been popping up in my streams lately. It's been really fun. We spent like entire streams just talking about gear and Twitch growth and just everything to do with being a new streamer. I know it's really hard to grow a stream, especially when you have zero followers. That's why I make these videos. I've been there, trust me, takes a lot of time. Also, I think I just had a great idea. I think for tomorrow's stream, I'm just gonna use this $20 mic just to prove a point. Also, feel free to join the Discord. This past week, people have been posting all of their stream layouts and I've been reviewing them on stream and it's just been so much fun. So if you guys have made like a really dope layout, post in the Discord and we might, we might go through it on stream and show everyone what you've done. But that's gonna do it for this video. So get out there and record something amazing and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Ugh, I did it. I did the Booth Junkies outro.